All right, subscribers, welcome back to another episode of Science with Serbac. Today, what we're going to be talking about is sections 20.5 and 20.6 in our AP Chemistry unit on electrochemistry. Now, before we get going into these notes, there are a few objectives that I would like you to be able to meet by the end of this video. Objective number one, interconvert among standard cell potential, change in Gibbs free energy, and the equilibrium constant for the oxidation reduction reactions. Objective number two, use the Nernst equation to calculate the concentration of an ion given the cell potential, the standard cell potential, and the concentrations of the remaining ions. And then objective number three is use the Nernst equation to calculate the cell potential under non-standard conditions. All right, so we get here and we really can lock in and we can really tie together multiple concepts that we have discussed this far. And so these multiple concepts uh, are often seen in this particular triangle where we have change in Gibbs free energy can be interrelated to standard cell potential, which can also be interrelated to our K, which is our equilibrium constant. Now you may be wondering, okay, well we discuss standard cell potential with electrochem. We discuss Gibbs free energy with our unit detailed on thermochemistry. And then we discuss our K, our equilibrium constant, in our equilibrium unit. Well, how in the world can we tie these things together? And so what we have is three different formulas. So tying together delta G and our standard cell potential, we have, we have this following formula. We have delta G equals negative N F times standard cell potential. Tying together delta G and K, we have this formula. We have this formula that is delta G is equal to the negative RT times our natural log of K. And then tying together cell potential and our equilibrium constant is as follows. Our standard cell, cell potential is equal to RT over N times F natural log K. Now, the next question should be running through your mind is, okay, I, I've seen some of these constants. Some of them look new to me. So let's go ahead, let's take the time here and let's talk about each and every variable that we see in every one of these equations. So delta G here, Delta G is Gibbs free energy. <clears throat> our N is our number of electrons in our balanced redox equations. Our F is Faraday's constant, and we can express Faraday's constant in a couple of different ways. One, it has the same value, and that value is 96,485 coulombs per mole or 96,485 485 joule per volt moles, okay? Now, because we're in electrochem, we're most likely gonna use this volt mole more often, but know that it does have that value and it is a constant. 
Now, our standard cell potential is something we've seen before and we utilize throughout this electrochem unit. And then our R is our ideal gas constant here. And so if we have our R, we need to make sure we have it in the following unit. And that unit, that unit is 8.314 joules, joules per mole K. All right. And we keep moving right along here. Our T is for our temperature. And that needs to be in units of Kelvin. And then our last thing here, here is our K, our big K, which is our equilibrium, equilibrium constant. And remember, an equilibrium constant has no units. Okay, so these are, are really important because, again, it really ties together multiple main concepts here in chemistry. So let's go ahead, let's apply this the best we can to an example problem. And you may want to keep this sheet handy as we interconvert between each of these three items or each of these three variables in that triangle. All right, so we've seen this problem here. Uh, we just haven't answered these questions before. So it says, uh, given that we have solid zinc and aqueous uh, copper uh, produce uh, zinc two plus and copper solid, uh, we want to produce or we want to identify the standard cell potential, the change in Gibbs free energy, and our equilibrium constant. Okay, so we're going to go in order here of finding these values. And so our standard cell potential, the thing with our standard cell potential is this. We need to identify which item or which substance is the cathode minus which substance is the anode. And so the key thing here is to identify what is oxidized and what is reduced. And so if we check this out, we have zinc that's solid. So its oxidation number is zero. And on the flip side, or on the right-hand side here, we have zinc with a 2 plus charge. So it went from a 0 to a positive 2 charge. That means it was oxidized because it lost electrons. And so I'm going to put this here. Our oxidation, oxidation half reaction, is as follows. It is solid zinc being oxidized to zinc 2 plus plus our two electrons. Now, what we really need out of this is, hey, what is that standard cell potential that we have here? So remember, we find that standard cell potential in those given charts. And so I'm gonna use table 20.1 and I find zinc 2 plus in this case, it's being reduced, but that's okay. We write down that exact value we see here. And so our standard cell potential is negative 0.76 volts, okay? Now, if zinc is being oxidized, that means copper must be getting reduced. And just to verify, it goes from a positive two charge to a zero charge, which means it gained electrons, and so that means it is reduced. So we call this the reduction, reduction reaction. Okay. And so again, I always leave a little space out in front for my reduction reaction. And that is because that is because we need to add electrons out in front. But copper two plus gets reduced 
to solid copper. And I should have put the states of matter here for our zinc. I'm going to do that while I'm thinking about it. And remember, we need our two electrons. Now, the important part here is our standard cell potential. We look up this on our chart. So we find copper 2 plus gets reduced down to solid copper. And it has a value, we write this exactly as we see it on the chart, of a positive 0 0.34 volts. Okay? And so we go and we have the overall reaction. Now, I'm going to emphasize this multiple times here, but remember when we have the overall reaction, our electrons must cancel. Now, that statement right there is going to play a role here later on in these notes, but we can see here that when we have our when we have our uh, electrons they are equal and on opposite sides of the equation. And so what that means, they cancel. And so what we would have for our overall, our overall reaction is as follows. We would have solid zinc reacting, reacting with copper 2 plus to produce zinc 2 plus zinc 2 plus and solid copper. Now that's fine and dandy and you could have looked up and seen our given equation. But remember, we want the overall cell potential for our value here. So we have to turn to our formula. We have all the players of the game. Now we just need to put them into our formula. So the standard cell potential here is our cathode minus our anode. So our cathode, our cathode here is our reduction reaction. So right here, I'm going to box this in green. Our cathode is the reduction half reaction. So that is the cathode. Now, up top here, the oxidation half reaction is our anode. Okay, so some important things to keep in mind as we do these problems. And so all we need to do here is we take our cathode, which is a positive 0 0.34 volts minus a negative 0 0.76 volts. And we turn to our calculators here. Okay, so we have 0 0.34 minus a negative 0 0.76. We press enter, and we get a value of 1.10. So the standard cell potential here of our zinc and copper is 1.10 volts. Now, that should be review from our electrochemistry. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to utilize those formulas that we just had on the other page, and we're going to find delta G. So I have a blank sheet of paper there uh, that we can utilize to be able to uh, keep going with these calculations. So keep this handy along with those formulas, and we will go to our calculations. So let's go ahead. Let's go in order. Number two says, hey, find delta G. And so remember, Delta G, delta G is equal to negative N times F times our standard cell potential, okay? So ultimately, delta G here is going to be what we're after. It's going to be our question mark. Now, our N is our number of electrons involved. Well, check this out. In our equation we use two electrons. Now, when we put in, in this case, all we need to do, all we need to do is put two for the time being. We keep moving along here and we use F and that is Faraday's constant here. And remember, we are going to use 96,485 joules per mole volts. 
okay? Or volt moles. Either way, that is a correct term. And then our standard cell potential. What we just calculated is what we're going to write down there. So our E cell is equal to 1.10 volts. So all we need to do now is plug this into our equation. And so we have delta G is equal to negative, that's part of the formula, 2 times our 96,000 485 joule per volt moles there times 1.10 volts, okay? So we're gonna plug this into our equation and see what happens. So we start out with negative two times 96,485 times 1.10. We press enter. And I am going to use four significant digits here. Our delta G, our delta G in this case here is negative 212,300 joules per mole. Now, you may often see this expressed as kilojoules. So if you just divide that by a thousand, you would get negative negative 212.3 kilojoules per mole. Now, I wanna talk about this negative sign. This negative sign is very important for delta G. And so if we have a negative, if we have a negative delta G, this means we have a spontaneous reaction, which is really important because that spontaneous reaction helps determine what gets reduced and what gets oxidized there. So that is how we would calculate our delta G. All right, so one more term here. We want to find out the natural log of K, okay? So now, our third problem here also uses delta G, which is equal to negative R times T times your natural log of K. Okay, so delta G, delta G, I am going to use this negative 212,300 joules per mole. So negative 212,300 joules per mole. Our R is our ideal gas law constant, which is 8.314 joules per mole K, and our T, our T, you may be wondering, okay, well, what is our T? Well, check this out here. This is at 25 degrees Celsius. This is at 25 degrees Celsius, or if you want to get more specific, 298.15 K. All right, that's because it was at 25 degrees Celsius, our standard reduction potential, where we got that standard cell potential here. Okay, and so natural log K is going to be our question mark. All right, so now delta, uh, delta G, delta G here is going to be negative 212,300 joule per mole equals negative 8.314 joule per mole K times the temperature of 298.15 K times the natural log of K, okay? And I should uh, correct this here. We can actually solve for K, so it just should be a big capital K as our question mark here. And so remember basic algebra, what we need to do here is this. We need to get rid of everything that's attached to natural log K. So it's attached via multiplication. We are going to divide everything and we need to divide everything on both sides. So we're gonna take negative 212,000 divided by negative 8.314 joule per mole 
and our, uh, our K for temperature would cancel out before we even get to this point. So we would just be left with times 298.15. And so we turn to our calculators. So we're going to take negative 212, 300, negative 212,300 divided by negative 8.314 times 298.15. We press enter and we get a value of 85, 85.6456. It keeps going on. I'm just going to leave that in my calculator for the time being. So I'm going to put 64 uh, around here. That equals natural log of K. Now, I'm interested just in K. So remember, the inverse of natural log is this E to the power button. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take each side to the inverse of this natural log. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to take second E. And then I'm going to just put my answer that I just had here in, into my calculator. I'm going to press Enter. All right, so here, here I get a value rounding to uh, three total digits of 1.57 times 10 to the 37th. And that is what K equals, okay? Well, remember, K does not have a unit, but we but we can express a couple of different things. This, this, remember K here is equal to your products over reactants. So K, K is equal to the concentration of your zinc two plus raised to that first power because that is the coefficient out in front of zinc divided by the concentration of copper 2 plus raised to that first power because that is the coefficient and then here 1.57 times 10 to the 37 is a huge number that is good because it shows products dominate it shows products dominate and you get that large uh, K, which means the reaction goes to completion, and it just proves again that we can have a spontaneous process in this occurrence. Okay, so that is what that that means right there. That is how we can navigate and negotiate through each of these uh, types of problems, and now we can move on to a little bit different concept here. And that is the Nernst equation. Okay, so our Nernst equation. So far, we have talked about our cell potential under standard conditions, which means that we are at 25 degrees Celsius, one atmosphere of pressure, and the molar concentrations of our solutions is exactly one molar. Well, hey, those are pretty specific conditions, and sometimes we just don't have those things in line. So that means our cell potential using our standard reduction table is going to be slightly off. Now, what I want to do here is I just want to outline our formula for our Nernst equation. So the formula you can see here is E cell equals our standard cell potential minus this stuff right here. So let's talk about each of these things here. So our standard, our, or excuse me, our cell potential here is just this, the cell potential under non-standard conditions. Now, our next term here should look pretty familiar. This is the cell potential under those standard conditions, which I just talked about. Standard conditions, 
25 degrees Celsius, one atmosphere of pressure, and uh, molar concentrations of exactly one molar. And then, and then we get to our business, then we get to our business here at the very end. And that, I'm gonna put all of this in, in one term as 2.303 divided by our N times our F, and that should be a capital F there, times RT log of Q. Well, this right here, this is the correction, this is the correction factor for not being at standard conditions. And so I wanna get a little bit more into detail here of what we have. So this right here, we're gonna see a lot of repeated terms that we've already defined, but our R is going to be 8.314 joules per mole K. Our T, remember we calculate cell potential at 25 degrees Celsius, so our T is actually 298.15 K. And our F for Faraday's constant is going to be 96485, 96485 joule per volt moles and then our n our n is our number of electrons and then our log q our log q is our reaction quotient okay so this is the reaction quotient and we can go a little bit further into detail besides just saying that this is the reaction quotient. We can say, hey, the reaction quotient is equal to the concentration of our products, of our products, divided by the concentration of our reactants. Okay? Now, these, very important here, these, these are raised to those coefficients. So I'm going to call uh, this, um, so just some sh generic terms here, L and P. And again, these things right here, L and P, are our coefficients. They're raised to that power in our coefficients, okay? Now, we need to remember a very important point here with our reaction quotient. And that is we do not include our solids. So I'm going to outline this. I'm going to say do not include, include solids. Okay. So we get, to our, uh, we get to our business here. If we have these conditions, we can clean this up just a little bit. So let's say we have this. 2.303 divided by our number of electrons, which is going to change, times our Faraday's constant, which is 96.485 joule per uh, mole K, or excuse me, uh, joule per volt mole, times our R, which is 8.314 joules per mole K times our temperature of 298.15 K times your log of Q. Your reaction quotient is going to change each and every time. So we have a lot of things packed in there and it often gets pretty difficult to consolidate to this. And so what we do, if I take all of these terms, so I take 2.303 times 8.314 
times 298.15. I press enter and I divide it by Faraday's constant, 9645. I press enter one more time. I get a value of 0 0.0592. So all of this right here can be summed up here by 0 0.0592 divided by n times the log of q, okay? So what that means is that for our Nernst equation, for our Nernst equation that we have here, our cell potential under non-standard conditions can be equal to our standard cell potential minus 0 0.0592 divided by n times times your log of Q, your reactant quotient, okay? So this, again, is assuming that we're at 298.15 K, and that's because that's how we got that value there. So we can utilize this particular equation when we are use, using the Nernst equation. Okay, so now let's go ahead, let's try one example and then we will move to the next, okay? So this problem should look familiar. We haven't talked about these concentrations yet, but remember this, remember this. We have a few things going on. I'm just gonna do a lot of copying from our previous page of notes today. And so remember, our standard cell potential is equal to our uh, cell potential of our cathode minus the cell potential of our anode. And we said here, we said here that the oxidation reaction, the oxidation reaction was zinc being oxidized to zinc two plus. So I'll write, write that down. Zinc being oxidized to zinc two plus. And that involved two electrons. And when we looked up the value, when we looked up the value there of our uh, standard cell potential from our chart, we found a value of negative, negative, Point seven six volts. Okay, and then we said our our reduction reaction, our re reduction reaction was our copper two plus. So our reduction reaction is is our copper two plus, and I'll leave some room here for I'll leave some room for our electrons. I should have done that. and it gets reduced to solid copper. Now the standard cell potential that we have here was a positive 0.34 volts. And then I made a very important concept here. It says the overall reaction must have electrons cancel. So I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna write that down once more. Well, the nice thing about this equation is they both use two electrons, so we can say those cancels. And so our overall, our overall reaction was as follows. It was, it was that zinc, that solid zinc, uh, plus our copper two plus produces, produces uh, our zinc two plus and our solid copper. Now, uh, this standard cell potential here was calculated via our uh, reaction or, or via our formula. And remember, our, our formula is cathode minus our anode and our anode is our oxidation half reaction and our cathode here our cathode here is our reduction half reaction and so when we found our standard cell potential 
when we found our standard cell potential, we ended up with something like this. We took our positive 0.34 volts minus our negative 0.76 volts, and we calculated this to be 1.10 volts. So that is our standard cell potential. Now, we are not under standard conditions because both of these are not one molar. They have to be one molar for that to hold true. So now we turn to now we turn to our uh, Nernst equation, which says, hey, our cell potential under non-standard conditions is equal to the cell potential minus your 0 0.0592 divided by your number of electrons your number of electrons times your log of Q. Okay, so now let's just fill in the gaps here with what we have. Our E cell is gonna be our overall question mark. Our standard cell potential here is what we have found before at 1.10 volts, okay? Now our N is our number of electrons. Well, check this out. Number of electrons involved is two. And then our log of Q, this is really important here, is the concentration of zinc, and I'll write this down, the concentration of zinc. So we put zinc in brackets here, Zn2 plus. We raise it to the coefficient in front of zinc, which is just one. Then we divide that by the concentration of copper 2 plus, we raise it to the coefficient of copper in our overall balanced equation, which is one. And now we need to insert our numbers. This in our problem is given at 0.2 concentration raised to that first power. And then our copper is 2.00 also raised to that first power. Okay, so now we can do this. We can say our E cell is equal to 1.10 volts minus minus our uh, 0.0592 divided by divided by 2 for the number of electrons times your log times your log of 0.200 raised to that first power divided by 2.00 raised to the first power. So a lot of work just to get to that setup, but we'll see this here. So 1.10 minus two sets of parentheses, 0 0.0592 divided by two for the number of electrons times your log of 0.2 raised to the first power divided by 2.00 raised to the first power. Close that, close that with two sets of parentheses and we press enter. So the cell potential under non-standard conditions or under these conditions of 25 degrees Celsius and the concentrations that are given is 1.13 volts. So our cell potential here equals 1.13 volts. So it doesn't vary that much but it does make a difference here in our overall voltage, and that's why we need that Nernst equation, okay? So let's go through one more example. Uh, we have not done the balancing yet, and then we'll be good to go for today. All right, so here is our problem. Again, first things first, identify the oxidation and reduction reaction. So Al started at zero, and it went to three plus. It got more positive, which means that Al is oxidized. So I'm going to put oxidize, oxidize reaction, and I'm going to abbreviate reaction Rxn. And so we have Al, solid aluminum, being oxidized to Al3+, plus, and this involves three electrons. Now, to find our cell potential like we've done on done on our others our standard cell potential is we look up this aluminum on our chart and there it is al3 plus 
it has a value. We write it down exactly as we see it on the chart of negative 1.66 volts. So negative 1.66 volts. And then we turn to cadmium. Cadmium went from 2 plus to 0. That means it got, got reduced. So this is our reduction, our reduction reaction. And our reduction reaction, remember, we always start out with our electrons, which I'll give you a, a, a break here. That is two electrons plus our cadmium, which is two plus. Yields solid cadmium. Now, if we look this up, if we look this up, I'll tell you it's not on table 20.1, so you will have to use your, uh, you will have to use your tables in your periodic table packet, but cadmium, cadmium, if we take a look, cadmium 2 plus being reduced to solid cap, cat, cadmium has a negative 4 point, excuse me, negative 0 0.403 volts. So it has a value of negative 0 0.403 volts. Now, the key thing here is identifying your anode and your cathode. Your oxidation, your oxidation here is your anode. So oxidation reaction, this guy right here is your anode. And your cathode is your reduction half reaction. But wait. Before we just plug these numbers into the equation, we need to bring up a very important point, and that is this. I'm going to say it again and pause. The overall reaction must have electrons cancel. So to get to our overall reactions, we have to have electrons cancel. Check this out. The oxidation reaction involves three electrons. The reduction reaction involves two. So here is what we need to do. We need to pause before we even get to our standard cell potential, and we need to do this. We need to see, hey, where do these electrons meet? Well, the answer is six. So we need to get to six electrons. So to get to six electrons on top, we're gonna multiply this top equation, we're gonna multiply this top equation by two. Now, notice this, I am not including the cell potential when I multiply my reaction. I'll explain that here in a second, but I get two ALs that are solids. Yields two AL three pluses plus six electrons. Remember, the cell potential here is an intensive property. So I can have as much AL as I want. The cell potential is still going to be is still going to be negative 1.66 volts, okay? So again, I had to do this because when I add up my redox reaction, the electrons must cancel, but the cell potential does not change. Now, to get to six electrons here, I need to multiply just the equation by three. So I end up with six electrons plus three cadmium two plus ions yields solid cadmium, three solid cadmium, okay? Now, again, just because I multiply the equation, the intensive property of our cell potential means that the cell potential will stay the same at negative 0 0.403 volts. Now, Again, I'm going to label this one more time. I know you could probably see it above, but the anode, the anode is the oxidation half reaction, and the cathode is is the reduction half reaction. And I, before I even get to the finding the standard cell potential here, I want to do this. I want to, to make sure that these add up, okay? So our electrons cancel out, that is really good. And we end up with two Al that is solid 
plus three cadmium, two plus ions, yields, yields two Al three plus. plus our three solid cadmiums, okay? Now, overall, hey, I want to find what is that standard cell potential, okay? So remember, this is your cathode minus your anode. Maybe I should put that up here. Your standard cell potential here is the cell potential of your cathode minus your anode, okay? So that's the equation I'm gonna use down here in just a second. And so my standard cell potential is this. Our standard cell potential for our cathode is negative 0.403. So negative 0.403 volts minus a negative 1.66 volts from our anode. Again, cathode minus anode. So when I do this, when I do this, I get negative 0 0.403 minus a negative 1.66. I press enter and I get a, a standard cell potential here. I get a standard cell potential of 1.26. All right, so our standard cell potential here is 1.26. All right, so almost there. Now we are not under standard conditions. We're at 25 degrees Celsius, which is nice. That means we have to use our Nernst equation. So remember, our Nernst equation says the cell potential under non-standard conditions is equal to the cell potential under standard conditions minus 0 0.0592 divided by N, your number of electrons, times your log of Q. All right, so going through this here, our cell potential, our cell potential is what we're trying to find, and so that becomes our question mark here. The standard cell potential we just took the time to find is a positive, and I should note that there, it's a positive 1.26 volts. And then you're in. This is really important. And this is why I've said this all throughout these notes. Remember, remember your overall reaction must have electrons that cancel. Well, your in is equal to those electrons that have canceled out. So in this case here, our in is equal to six. And remember, we can just leave in as six. And then your log, your log of Q is equal to your products over reactants that do not include the solids. So it is going to be Al3 plus. But remember, we gotta raise it to that coefficient in front of Al3 plus, which is two all divided by the concentration of cadmium, CD, two plus, raised to the coefficient of three. So we plug those numbers in so you can see them. And so that means we get, we get a, a log of Q to be equal to um, the nat or the log, the log of our concentration of aluminum, which is 0 0.01 molar. So this would be log of point, point 0 0.01 molar raised to the second power divided by cadmium, which has a concentration of one molar raised to the third power. Okay, so our uh, Again, our, our log of Q is going to equal this. And I'm going to, going to rewrite this here uh, so we show that in our steps. Again, our log of Q is equal to the log of Al3 plus divided by Cd2 plus. You have to remember those coefficients because it is the reaction quotient. 
All right, so let's go ahead, let's plug all of this stuff into our Nernst equation and finally get to the cell potential here. So the cell potential is equal to positive 1.26 volts minus 0 0.0592 divided by your number of electrons involved, which is six times times the log times the log of the concentration of your aluminum, 0 0.011 molar, raised to that coefficient, okay? Divided by the concentration of your cadmium, one molar raised to the coefficient of three, okay? So we need to be really careful as we solve this particular problem. Here we go, we're gonna take 1.26, minus, double set of parentheses, 0 0.0592 divided by 6 times the log of 0 0.0100 raised to the second power divided by, divided by 1.00 raised to the third power, double set of parentheses, and we press enter. So our cell, poten cell potential under these conditions, 25 degrees Celsius and the respective concentrations, the cell potential here is 1.30 volts, okay? So the key thing is finding that standard cell potential and then making sure your Q is set up along with the number of electrons. All right. We put a lot of mathematical concepts into these notes. We have tied together a lot of what we have, have, have talked about with cell potential, and we've said, hey, what happens if we're under standard conditions? And now, what is happening if we're not under those standard conditions? We can still calculate the overall cell potential of our particular uh, redox reaction. Again, a lot going on here. Really take your time finding the number of electrons and putting those, those, the reaction quotient together. Key thing here is going to be our coefficients. All right, I hope you have enjoyed this video and uh, learned quite a lot. As always, if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe.